In the year 2021, the Chronex Corporation will introduce commercial time travel. But you can join Chronex now and journey through a time gate to adventure. Adventure at the dawn of time. A time before civilization. A time before man. When ancient beasts dominated the earth. Time gate. has begun on TimeGate. So here we have, this is Phil Tippett mixing up some goop and, and now Mrs. Tippett, they weren't married at the time, Jules to our left of him. That's me going by in the background. And what we're working on here is a full-size crocodile back. Nick Selden, who went on to be a miniature maker and writer. And I'm having some kind of excedrin headache, I guess. This is the uh, this crocodile that we made for, for less than $200, seriously, and if a studio did this, it would be thousands of dollars, and we just used very lightweight wood, and we used cardboard, and we liberally waterproofed it with polyester resin, and this was for, you know, the crocodile was primarily going to be a stop-motion creature, but we needed to have a couple of shots where our uh, time tourists are crossing a lake on a, on a raft made out of air mattresses because they're they've had a serious problem and so they just jury rigged these rafts from air mattresses and they get attacked by a giant phobosuchus so we needed shots of the back of the crocodiles sliding under the raft that's our first indication that there's a problem and so we needed that to be full size so we made this thing that was hollow and we put you know the idea was to put a couple scuba divers inside it and just have them with swim fins just propel this thing along and we actually took it out to Hanson Dam and tested it and we put weights on it, we got neutral buoyancy, and it, it worked fine. But you know, for uh, one of the advantages, I mean there were some disadvantages to what I was doing, but the advantage of being both the effects director and the director of the film was I knew exactly what I wanted to shoot. Normally, the people doing the effects aren't always sure what the director is going to do, so they have to be prepared in case he gets a bright idea on the spot. They might want to see, you know, the other side of the crocodile. Well, I knew we weren't going to do that, so we just didn't build it. This is Tom Sherman. Uh, who built the miniature that we used for our avalanche scenes. There's me. Uh, we had, Tom had to duplicate Red Rock Canyon because the live action was being shot at Red Rock Canyon. And his first idea was to have this sort of little track car that went along the top and dumped all the rocks, which was really good. It was a wonderful idea, but it turned out in the end we didn't do that. We just sort of tossed them off by hand. So this is the... Uh, the extent of our miniature and by redressing this miniature and shooting at all different angles and then cutting it up and making L angles and, and replastering it, we were able to get a lot of shots. So you just saw two in the previous trailer, but we had a sequence that went on for, for several minutes. There's Ken Ralston who later became extremely well known, effects supervisor, department head. There's Ken outside sorting rocks. These rocks are all pieces of styrofoam, and Tom is powdering the uh, styrofoam with fuller's earth and dry color so that when the rocks fall, they'll give off a little dust, and that just helps. Phil's putting up some kind of protective baffle. Now, you, you know, probably a lot of you know there's Doug Beswick. Uh, as you probably know, when you're photographing miniatures, you want to shoot at a higher than normal camera speed so that it takes, uh, in this case, falling rocks longer to fall. and the idea is if they, they take longer to fall, the assumption is that they're falling farther because we know the speed that, that a rock would fall. So we, we uh, read this miniature as, as being full size. Now we found the color negative for the rest of this. This was all at once like this, but this is the only part I've got, still got the color negative on. So there we go for a take. Very dusty job. I loved riding the dolly through the dust. Hmm. So this is what we ended up doing, just throwing the rocks out of boxes. <laughs> and Phil knows he's on camera, so he's having fun with us. <laughs> and the 
Bill had shot most of this footage, which is good because it's like the only record we have. So this is just out in the parking lot of, of the shop we had for where we did the miniature effects and also uh, built a lot of the full-size props for the film. There's Bill down there. Somewhere, yes. I think we've got a, yeah, this one's actually shot in slow motion. So this, I don't think the Bolex was running quite as fast as the 35 camera was. We shot most of these at 72 and 80 frames per second, which was about right for this scale. And a lot of these shots look very good. I, I didn't uh, find the actual sequence, but I do have somewhere the edited sequence of all the background plates. We never got the, the animation. The animation for the sequence was that crab like walking machine that you saw in the promo reel that we built full size. But we had a stop motion version, and it has to run through the canyon to try to out distance the avalanche. So they're still making the Tramadon model. Back in the days when we could all focus that close without mechanical aids, <laughs> this pterodactyl was uh, actually only in a couple shots in the, in the script. The, uh, it's sitting on, it's perched on the uh, cliff of the canyon. And one of the tourists, without authorization, tries to take a shot at it, which he isn't supposed to do without getting the guide's permission. And the pterodactyl takes wing and dislodge a, dislodges a rock, and the rock falls and dislodges a boulder, and the avalanche starts. Um, here we are out on location at uh, Red Mountain, shooting uh, some of the background plates. My idea to save money on this film was to shoot all the stuff we could in advance of principal photography because that way the backer could keep most of his money invested at interest and just pull a little bit out to fund these very small crews and then once we got it all all of that stuff in the camera they'd hire the big you know 50 60 70 person crew and we'd go out and shoot for six weeks and you'll see here in a minute there's an explosion going off I don't know if they blew up a rocket or an airplane crashed or what but I thought this looks so much like a volcano let's get this shot well Poor Rita Eggleston, who's doubling for our actress, who is as yet uncast, hadn't had any chance to work out with this sort of revised trail bike, and she couldn't, couldn't make the turn. So I'm getting more and more frazzled because my wonderful accidental smoke is dissipating, and we're still not getting the shot. I hope nobody was hurt with whatever caused that smoke, but it sure looked prehistoric to me. Now this picture was almost, what little of it was done was almost done twice. We went out here with these very crude uh, methods and an early version of the trail bike and, and very simple track dollies. And then when Mel Simon saw what we were doing and thought he'd give us more money, then we sort of started again and we built that better dolly system that you saw in a couple stills in the promo reel. But this was sort of the home, the home movie approach. When we were, that's Roger Dickon, by the way, who worked with me on When Dinosaurs Rule the Earth and did a lot of other productions. And we had one shot here where Rita's supposed to take a spill. The idea is that she uh, surprises a mother Styracosaurus and a baby Styracosaurus when she's riding, riding ahead, riding point for the walking machine. And so she uh, tries to get back to warn the walking machine to, to, to not go that way and the dinosaurs chase her and uh, she loses control of the bike, so she's got to do a, what they call a bike lay down. And uh, so we're getting ready to do that. I didn't uh, really have time to edit this. Some of it's a little redundant. So they see the dinosaur sticks being taken out. I put those poles in at the beginning of every shot so we can line up the size of the, the puppet dinosaur. She's going to go try this lay down, and she doesn't like the feel of it. And we had to come up with a cue system because she's supposed to look as though she's hurt, and we wouldn't have any way to know if she was really hurt or not. So the idea was if she was really hurt, she was supposed to stick an arm up. And then we realized, well, if she was really, really hurt, she might not be able to stick her arm up. So we're all going over to make sure she's OK. And she was, she was fine. And, but actually the, the lay down wasn't as spectacular as I wanted, but 
we figured maybe with editing we could fix it. Here we're uh, putting down tracks. And Rita, not only is she a, a good stunt double, but she's a very good sportster. She helped us carry palm trees. And I get to ride. Everybody else has to push. And these are, again, shots, what would be seen from the walking machine. Uh, this actually, I think this was supposed to be the viewpoint through a camera. One of the tourists is photographing an ornithomimus that's pacing the walking machine, and that's the background plate for it, if I remember correctly. Then we tried to use this, just a ladder braced off to do the high shots, and it worked okay, but it wasn't as good as the bigger pipe dolly we did later. <coughs> 